the way we form our identity according to the world standards is completely different than the way that God creates our identity. Because our identity is not found in what we do. It's found in who Jesus is and who he says we are. Stay tuned. friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach. I know sometimes you doubt if you are truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own. I know that you are praying for a way to know the difference and to be confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word. If you are ready to grow in your faith and your identity in Christ and to confidently step into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, before we get into today's episode, I have a quick word. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know, I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org. And for a limited time, I'm offering all of my podcast listeners a special discount of 20% off. You can use the discount code hearing Jesus. That's one word, all caps, to get your discount. There are also some free videos and a leader's guide for you to get started. Again, head to shehears.org and you can find the Bible study on the resources page. Welcome friends to the Hearing Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. This week, we will be taking a look at this, at a story from the book of John that is kind of on the heavy side. And on some levels, I do apologize for the heaviness of it. But in other ways, I think it's a chance for us to bring our own heaviness that we all carry to Jesus. My hope and my prayer for this week is that we can walk through this woman's story together and learn together as we go. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. Here we go. This is from John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people were coming to him. And he sat down, and he began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery, and having her set the center of the court, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery, in the very act. Now in the law of Moses, it commanded us to stone such women. What then do you say? They were saying this, testing him, so that they might have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger he wrote on the ground. But when they persisted in asking him, he straightened up, and he said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they began to go out one by one, beginning with the older ones. And he was left alone and the woman where she was in the center of the court. Straightening up, Jesus said to her, woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go from now on, sin no more. There's a lot that we're going to get into this week. But I have a couple things I want you to notice for day one. If you're going along in the She Hears Bible study, you'll you'll notice this is chapter three. The title of this week's chapter, The Woman Doesn't Have a Name. And I did struggle a little bit with what to even call this chapter. Initially, I was going to call it Unnamed. Um, But after studying her, I realized that this woman did have a name. She has a name that the world knows her by. A woman caught in adultery. And had I said that, you probably would have immediately known what I was talking about, for those of you that have grown up in the church world, before I even shared what scripture it was. And when you study this portion of scripture, um, this is what all the scholars refer to her as. And nowhere in all of my studying did I find her called, in fact, by another name. Instead, what we find over and over is this woman 
who is identified by her sin. Have you ever been identified by your sin? For some of us, maybe that is a reality. We are known by the mistakes that we have made. But for others, that identity isn't necessarily what other people call us. Instead, it's an identity we place on ourselves. Liar. Thief. Cheater. Have there ever been times in your life where your struggle has become part of your identity? And regardless if it's because of your own choices or the choices of others, sometimes those names can become part of us. If you need a minute, take a minute to think through some of the things that you have carried with you as part of your own identity. Because so often, we can even label ourselves the things that we carry. I remember a time when my oldest daughters were very little. And they were young enough that both of them could fit inside the same stroller. And so I was in this place where I was trying to get my life back together. And in that process, I found myself with very little money. And a church I had been a part of several years before was holding this rummage sale. They do that around here. And so I needed some clothes from the kids for the kids, and I decided to go. And so I got the girls out of the car, I got them into the stroller, and I walked up from the parking lot to the doors of the church. And there was only steps there. And so I had to push my stroller up this hill on the grass in order to even get to the doors of the church. And as I did that, the wheels of the stroller slipped out from underneath me, and I slid face first down into the mud, and I didn't even realize that that mud was there or that it was muddy. The stroller flipped upside down and the girls landed in the mud with me. Thankfully, they were all okay. But my white shirt was covered. My face was covered. My children were covered. And it was this thick brown mud that would not come off. I had these homemade wipes because we were on such a budget. I had these homemade wipes that I had made with me and they weren't doing justice to this mud. And so... As embarrassed as I was, and of course there were people watching me at the door to the church that no one came to help or anything like that, as embarrassed as I was, and I wanted to just turn around and go home, I still needed kids' clothes. And so I picked myself up, picked up the kids, I carefully pulled the stroller back up the stairs instead of trying the hill again, which is a pain in the butt, as you know, with little kids, and... I felt so ashamed, but I still walked through those doors and I realized that the door greeters were still standing there. They stood there and they watched me the entire time and they still just watched me come up the steps and they had watched me fall. They, 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 it was just this bizarre situation where I just think of how I would never treat somebody like that. And of course they're eyeing me and the mud on our faces And I just felt so small and so rejected. And years later now, I realized that there was much more going on that day. I think in some ways it was kind of a parallel to what I had experienced from the quote unquote church, the body of Christ. And in some of my really, some of my darkest days, um, I wore the stain of failure like a garment And people could see it. Not only could they see it, but they would comment on it. And so there would all be all these, you know, hateful things that people would tell me that I needed to do um, without ever offering help or showing me how or coming alongside of me. And they would watch from the doors of their churches, but they would never offer to help me up out of the mud. And in fact, if I would start to clean myself up a little bit in my life, they would remind me that I was still dirty. That's the thing about a stain. Stains don't really go away. They ruin the garment. They change it. And it's no longer valuable because it becomes known by the stain. Like that's not the shirt I can wear because it's got a stain all over it. What things have stained you? Are there things that you still carry? I know this is a rough way to start day one, but this week is about healing. And healing from from that label that the world puts on us but in order to do that we have to name the thing that we're seeking healing from we have to name it so we can deal with it or so God can deal with it and believe me he already knows he already knows that's your heart check for today take a little time to name maybe some of the things that you've carried with you allowing them to stain those parts of your heart that carry an identity 
tainted by sin. In the days to come, we're going to be dealing with our own sin. And I'm not negating personal responsibility, regardless if it's a lifestyle of sin or giving in to temptation. That's not today's focus. Today, today is about her name, her identity, the woman called, caught in adultery. And so as we look through this perspective of Jesus, we hear that he called her something else. Do you remember what Jesus called her in verse 10? When Jesus addresses her, he simply calls her woman. If you never thought about that before, I want you to realize that this is a significant thing. And we talked about this in chapter one when we were studying Mary, the mother of Jesus. In our Western understanding, um, the name woman kind of has a different connotation than the culture in Jesus' time would have understood it to mean. So when we hear Jesus say woman, it was a term of endearment. It was the same name that he called his mother, if you remember from week one. And it's the name we're going to use for our study this week. We're just going to call her woman. We're not going to call her a woman who had been caught in adultery. Just woman. You see, the world will try to define us by the struggle that we carry. Addicted. Unemployed. Imposter. Whatever it is. But Jesus... Jesus gives us a new name. Even as he stands up for us, covering our sin, he calls us to himself in the same term of affection that he used towards his mother. Do you know what that means? It means your struggle doesn't define you. Did you hear me, friend? It means your struggle doesn't define you. Jesus does. I want you to remember that as we study together this week. I want you to remember that when the world throws a label at you, that you can keep fighting hard to shake it. But our interaction with Jesus is the very thing that will change our struggle, our sin, and our lives enough that we can be called a new name. And our new identity is because of him, what he calls us. And it's not that he doesn't know what we're up to. He's not ignorant to the things that we're struggling with, of the sin that we have. In fact, it's the very reason that he came to forgive us, to cover us, to defend us, to love us. And that love, that's what causes us to change. As we respond to his love, that natural inclination of our hearts will start to become different. And our identity is no longer going to be wrapped up in our past, but instead it will align with our future. And so he's given you a new name, sis. What is it? Dear one, loved woman. God, I thank you for my friends that are listening today. Help us to know that regardless of what the world throws at us, that you define us differently, that our identity is not found in our struggle or our sin, but our identity is found in you and the forgiveness that you offer. And it doesn't matter if it's once or a hundred times that you are still there offering us the forgiveness and that opportunity to change our lives. Lord God, I pray for an authentic interaction for my friends today, that they would experience you in such a way that the natural inclination of their hearts would be to seek you. And as we seek you, we know that we'll find you. Thank you, Lord God, that you go above and beyond to find us in our mess. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call on your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.